Some of the witnesses uh, to this event have said and said at the news conference yesterday that they thought he was talking to someone else in the nightclub, that someone else was helping him, that someone else may in fact have even been firing shots and the FBI and the police chief said they know of no one else who is doing that. But in terms of what's new about the investigation, uh, beyond of course what they're going to talk about publicly is the main focus right now of investigators is on Omar Mateen's wife and what she knew Because this is an ongoing investigation, there's still much that I cannot share with you. So I'd ask for your patience, and when I tell you that there are certain things that I just cannot discuss at this time, we continue to cover many leads, and we don't. We want to make sure that we share information, that when we share it with you, it's not only timely, but that it is accurate. We owe it to the victims, their families, the loved ones, and the community to bear witness with finite accuracy. The FBI's Office of Victim Assistance and our highly experienced Victim Assistance Rapid Deployment Team is working together with the City of Orlando and many of our state and local counterparts and community agencies to provide resources and support victims, the next of kin, and loved ones at the Family Assistance Center. And now we have recently moved the Family Assistance Center, so I'd like to share with you where it's located which is at the Camping World Stadium, and it's open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Wednesday through Friday, and 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, and noon to 8 p.m. on Sunday. And for more information regarding that, I would ask you to please visit fbi.gov forward slash Orlando victims, all one word. There have been media reports about alleged threats or attacks on members of religious or ethnic communities that could be perceived to be in response to the shooting at the Pulse. Let me be beyond clear on that point. Civil rights violations are a priority for the FBI. And we will investigate reported incidents against individuals based upon any class, any protected class to include race, religion, and sexual orientation. Any known threats or known incidents should be reported to your local FBI office or local law enforcement agencies. Let me tell you a little bit about where we are today with the investigation. The FBI's evidence response team remains at the pulse and we continue to process the crime scene. As you might imagine, this is a methodical, time-sensitive, time-intensive work that includes trajectory analysis and crime scene mapping. It's imperative that we get this right. We're committed to staying here for as long as it takes to carefully process the vast crime scene. I will tell you that efforts are underway to re reduce our footprint in an, effect, in an attempt to have the city return to some sense of normalcy. We're doing our best to work as efficiently and as effectively as possible but remember, our goal is to maintain the integrity of the crime scene and the evidence that we collect. We continue to seek and follow all leads about the activities and associates of the shooter, Omar Mir Sadiq Mateen, who, like the director, I will not mention his name again. We need your help through in developing the most complete picture of what the shooter did and why he did it. The FBI has placed a seeking information poster on our website at fbi.gov that includes photos and additional information about the shooter. We want to hear from any member of the public who has had any connection or involvement with or any information about the shooter. You may, no matter how big or small you think that information may be, as in the plea I asked at the beginning of this investigation, we want to hear from you. You have come through for me and I appreciate that. We have received volumes of information and leads and tips that we have been following up on and continue to follow up on. But regardless of how small that information may be, I still want to hear about it. The FBI stands ready to receive your information. Please do so by continuing to call FBI 1-800-CALL-FBI or by submitting us a tip at online at tips.fbi.gov.
Again, we ask anyone who may have had contact with the shooter to report that information to the FBI. No piece of information is too small, and no piece of information will not be kept on will not be kept confidential. You have our assurance we will keep your information confidential. We need those tips to continue coming. As I said before, this investigation is ongoing, and we're not able to provide additional information at this time. Investigations are deliberate by their very nature, and that's because we want to be able to tell you what happened in a thorough and accurate way, but realize that will take some time. I ask for your patience as we go about our work. We will continue to keep you informed of our progress, and we will continue to have these briefings as information dictates, and we are able to share that with the entire community. Once again, I'd like to thank our partner agencies, and most of all, I want to thank the Orlando community. Your courage, compassion, and resilience in the face of a great tragedy are an inspiration to us all. Orlando strong. Before I depart and turn it over to Chief John Mina, I'd like to remind you of two sites that I hope that the public takes advantage of. The first one being fbi.gov forward slash Orlando victims. That has information about the Family Assistance Center and things that the FBI and your local community can do to help you if you are a victim or a loved one of the victims. If you have any questions about any of the vehicles that had to be abandoned as a result of the crime scene, we have set up a 1-800, uh, I'm sorry, a, a phone number at 407-246-HELP, H-E-L-P, or 407-246-4357. And if we are not able to release that vehicle to you at this time, we will provide you with information as to when that vehicle will be available and what you would need to do to be able to take possession of that vehicle. I now turn it over to Police Chief John Mina. Good afternoon. Uh, many of you, many people from the public have asked how our officers are doing, especially the first responders that night. Uh, our, about yesterday, three or four hundred officers uh, came to a, a critical stress management debriefing. Uh, the purpose of that debriefing was for the officers to talk about uh, how they were feeling, to vent to their peers, and to talk about their experience to help them cope and deal with this tragic situation. So after the, the main group uh, talked for a bit and were given some instruction by some uh, trained counselors, they all broke out into classrooms and in groups of 10 or 15 and had more sessions with trained counselors to talk about uh, their circumstances, their experiences, and how they were feeling and how to deal with the management of the stress of responding to such a tragic incident. So this morning we did the exact same thing with our SWAT team. Uh, all of the members who responded, including uh, the officers who were involved in the shooting. And I can tell you, these are some of the most courageous, uh, heroic and toughest men I know. Uh, men who have seen things, murders, homicides, uh, unfortunately dead, dead infants, horrific car crashes, but no one can prepare uh, you for what those officers encountered that night. They stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, went face-to-face -face with a mass murderer and performed heroically and courageously, and I'm extremely, extremely proud of them. Uh, so, after all those stress debriefings uh, take place, we're gonna offer, offer free counseling, continuing uh, to those officers. Several agencies have come forward to offer that counseling to to make sure our officers are dealing with that uh, correctly. Uh, now I want to talk about uh, the media contacting those officers who have been involved in the shooting. As per our policy and procedure, those officers who were involved in the shooting uh, are relieved of duty and are prohibited from talking about the shooting or the investigation or any of the circumstances. So we I cannot stress this enough, do not attempt to contact these officers. They will not talk to you. They are prohibited from talking to you by our policies and also by law. So please do not contact them. Uh, they will also not talk about the, investig the federal investigation uh, and they will not compromise this investigation. 
And honestly, I would tell you that there have been some aggressive uh, media outlets that have gone to our officers' homes, have called parents out of state, have posted pictures. Uh, we're stressing to let these officers deal with this situation that they had to deal with that night. Let them be with their families and let them heal uh, without bothering. Like I said, they cannot talk about the investigation, so uh, we would appreciate your cooperation in this matter. And, and now I'm going to turn it over to the U.S. Attorney. Good afternoon. I'm Lee Bentley, the United States Attorney for the Middle District of Florida. The last three and a half days have been extremely difficult for me personally, for my office, for the Department of Justice, and for our law enforcement partners. Like you, in the city of Orlando, we're grieving for the 49 victims of the horrific attack at the Pulse nightclub. But while grieving, we're continuing to investigate the crime that occurred and all of the facts and circumstances that led up to it. Today, I'm not going to speculate with respect to any charges that might be brought or indeed as to whether any charges will be brought. It's premature to do so. I'm not going to speculate today as to any charges that may be brought or indeed about whether any charges will be brought in this case. It is premature to do so. It would interfere and hamper the investigation to put out premature information about where the investigation is headed. I can assure you that it will be a full and complete investigation and the facts will be known to the public, made known to the public at the appropriate time. Assistant Special Agent in Charge Ron Hopper commented about the threats that have been made to members of the Muslim community. Making these threats is not only wrong, in most cases making these threats is illegal. Stop it. Any threats like this detract from what we're doing in law enforcement. We want to spend 100% of our time investigating the crime that occurred at the Pulse nightclub and the facts leading up to it. Don't distract us from what we need to be doing. And I, I say to anyone out there who's made any such threat or is considering making such a threat, grieve with us. Grieve for the victims of the nightclub shooting with the same solemn, solemnity that we are doing and with which it deserves. I'd like to thank all of our federal, state, and local law enforcement officers. Obviously, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, ATF, Homeland Security, and even DEA have been involved in this investigation. Our state partners have been wonderful, starting with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the City of Orlando Police Department, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, and of course the state prosecutors have been cooperating as well. The statewide prosecutor as well as the Orange County State Attorney, Jeff Ashton, who's behind me. I also would like to thank my colleagues at the Maine Department of Justice. I've spoken regularly to the Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates and to our Attorney General Loretta Lynch. In fact, I'll be speaking again to the Attorney General shortly after this press conference. I cannot express to you how concerned the Attorney General and everyone else in the Department of Justice is about the victims in this case, and they are devoting all of their attentions to this investigation. Now I'd like to turn it over to a number of our elected officials who are going to speak. I'd like to tell you that you've seen a number of our elected officials here on scene. Every one of them 
has tried to assist in the investigation and have had only one question of us. What can we do to help? They obviously have some remarks to make for the communities they serve, to the state they serve. Please respect them by not asking them specific questions about the facts of this investigation. And now I'm going to turn it over to Florida Governor Rick Scott. Thank you. First, I want to thank um, the federal, state, and local law enforcement. They have done an outstanding job. It starts with the uh, individuals that showed up at the uh, gay nightclub polls and were willing to risk their lives to save people that they, they never had met before and maybe never will meet again. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the entire Orlando community and truthfully the world. Everybody has shown up to say how can they be helpful. Uh, Mayor Jacobs and Mayor Dyer have been here relentlessly seeing what they can do uh, to be helpful. I've had the opportunity to talk to family members that lost their loved ones, uh, have family members that show, have struggled for their life, they're still going through surgery. I uh, have to cry with the lady that told, recounted the story of the last time she talked to her son and the story of how he bled to death. I talked to a young man that uh, had gunshot wounds. His first concern was how he got back to work. But there's, these are all people just like us. This was clearly an attack on our gay community. It was an attack on our Hispanic community. It was an attack on Orlando. It was a terror attack on our nation. It was clearly a terror attack on our way of life. Our city, our state, our nation is going to come back together. I want to thank all of you that have called and tried to help our, our law enforcement. At the state, I've kept our agencies uh, apprised of all that we're doing and constantly ask them what they can be doing. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement has set aside $520,000 to help the Orlando Police Department cover some of their expenses. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement has also asked justice for $2 million in grants to help both the city and the county to cover uh, expenses that they have. The State Department of Children and Families has set aside $500,000 to cover grief counseling and other issues. And I want to congratulate uh, the mayor, the mayors for the uh, for what they've done with regard to uh, reaching out to everybody that's impacted in the new, uh, new center that's open. As I've talked to family members, they are just now, they're, they're in their grieving process, but they're, they're moving on to how are they going to, to bury their loved ones. They're asking for privacy. They're asking for people to respect them. No different than what you would expect if this happened to one of your loved ones. I know everybody is very interested in what happened here, but this is somebody's son or daughter, brother, sister, grandchild, and they are grieving. They cannot imagine how this happened to their family. Like none of us could imagine how this could have happened to any of our families. So I want to thank everybody for all they're doing to help each of these families get back to work, get their lives back to as normal as possible, and never be the same. But this state is resilient, this city is resilient, this country is resilient. We all know we've got to, this is terror, we've got to destroy ISIS. And as a nation, we'll do that. Thank you. Now I'll turn it over to, um, to Mayor Buddy Dyer. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. During the past three days, the people of Orlando, across the country and around the world have responded with love, compassion, and unity. And we are overwhelmed by the outpouring of love for our community. I'm pleased to announce that we've had one, the One Orlando Fund open for two days and we have already raised $3.6 billion and that total keeps rising. Disney stepped up to a million dollars. The Orlando Magic and DeVos Family Foundation donated $500,000 and earlier today J.P. Morgan also donated $500,000. But today we continue to help the victims and those who witnessed the event to 
recover. The chief talked about our efforts with our first responders and city personnel and county and local law enforcement agencies in terms of getting the counseling that they need. But there's a wide range of services that the families and the victims and the, the witnesses need. So earlier today, we opened the Orlando Family Assistance Center at Camping World Stadium. And that's formerly known as the Citrus Bowl. So a lot of you would probably know it as the Citrus Bowl. But it's Camping World Stadium. We have all of the necessary support services in one location. I had a chance to meet with the various providers this morning and they are extremely excited to be able to be helpful. So many people want to reach out and be able to do something and they are able to do something for the victims. Everything from assisting with funeral services to pet foster care, airlines facilitating travel, uh, our tax collector issuing driver's licenses and IDs. I want to thank the press corps for the responsible reporting and coverage of this event and the coverage of the heroic acts and the stories of the people that were involved. But I do want to emphasize what the chief said and ask you to ask you to um, can we get a first responder? Yeah. Can we get a first responder? I just want to finish with, I appreciate everybody has a job to do, and I think for the most part everybody has done their job well, but please do respect our police officers. They can't talk to you. There's still a federal investigation and an FDLE investigation going on, so please respect them. Mayor Teresa Jacobs. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as mayor of Orange County, I'm calling on all of our 1.2 million residents to do two things, and I'm calling on the citizens across the greater region of 3.3 million people to do two things. One, as assistant, special assistant, Harper, oh. Harper has said, if you see something, say something. If you say something, he will do something. I think we have all seen by what we've learned so far that if more people would have said something sooner, it's just possible this could have been prevented. Please help us in reporting everything that you see that you think could be suspicious or related to this. Next, we have a lot of funerals coming up in our community over the next week and week to week and a half. And as I've heard everybody say, we're a resilient community. And we are a resilient community, but our capacity to be resilient is only as great as our capacity to love, care for, and support everyone in this community. So I'm calling on every member of Orange County, every citizen of this region, to exercise the utmost compassion for every person, for every person experiencing grief, for every person you may disagree with. This is a time for us to come together. This is a time when anyone else who seeks to come to our community and threaten the lives of our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our friends, this is the time when we say enough is enough, we will not tolerate it. So I think it's time for all of us to look deep in our hearts and souls and make sure we are doing our best to be the kind of people that the five, the 50 people that have died, that they deserve to have protecting them. God bless you and thank you. And now I will turn the podium over back to Mira Dyer, who's going to take questions. With respect to the uh, the wife, I can tell you that 
That is only one of uh, many interviews that we've done and will continue to do in this investigation. I cannot comment on the content or the outcome of that investigation, and so at this time I would have no further comment. Have you spoken to other gay club owners, such as Revere? Other gay club owners in Orlando, have you spoken to them, such as the Revere Club? The FBI considers uh, notifying all clubs in the area, which we, what we refer to commonly as uh, duty to notify. And we have put out uh, intelligence bulletins uh, and made contact with those clubs to give them a, a heightened sense of awareness. I would ask that based on the fact that we are going through the period of Ramadan and that we have the 4th of July coming up, that everyone in the community should have just a general sense of awareness, but there's no credible or specific threat that indicates there are anything uh, planned for the Orlando area or nationally. I'm sorry? I can't hear you. Can anybody hear me? The question was, was there an opportunity to follow him beforehand? There, there, there are policy and legal implications with respect to counterterrorism investigations. And as I mentioned earlier, at the time of this particular incident, this individual was not a subject of an active investigation, which limits on, on those things that we can do. So at, no, there was no surveillance at that time. I'm sorry? I have no information on that at this time. The FBI is reconstructing uh, the subject's movements uh, going back months, days, hours, and minutes before the fatal act here at the Pulse nightclub, and that is something we are looking at and scrubbing thoroughly. It's not anything I can share with you at this time. What was the make and model of the firearms? I'm sorry? What was the make and model of the firearms? All, all the firearms in this incident have been collected and are currently being processed back at Quantico, Virginia, but I will not comment on the types of firearms that were used. What was the question? When did the FBI become aware? I, I don't have that information. I don't have that information at this time. You believe that he was facing other targets, and have you been able to establish when the Facebook was distributed to him or made sense before or during the so that's a two-part question. The question was, are we aware of any uh, other intended targets? I can tell you that we are continuing to pour, to pour through voluminous amounts of digital media, media as well as interviews and other investigative techniques. And at this time, there's nothing to suggest there was any other target other than the Pulse nightclub. Sir, what was the second? The second part, sir. Uh, with respect to the Facebook uh, page, uh, that digital uh, analysis is ongoing, and I don't have the answer to that question. I'm sorry. What I'm telling you is, through the review that we've done of all the evidence thus far, this was the intended point of attack for that evening. The question was, were any other firearms fired inside besides the shooter and the police? To my knowledge, no, not at this time. I'm not aware of any. Sir, can you explain why you were going Pulse was sort of the target that night? I can't share that with you at this time. Sir, are you still really out to the I can tell you that right now, as we speak, there are no impending charges, and I will defer to the United States Attorney to comment on that, but I will tell you that I gave you a commitment when I stood before you the very first day that this happened. We will leave no stone unturned, and what that means is, at the end of all of our interviews, however long that takes, if someone is able to be charged in this investigation, we will bring them to justice. So just leave it again, you notified by Disney that the team was there in April, possibly taking the part. I'm, I was not made aware of, of that accusation, no. Personally, I was not. I, I don't have any information on that. I'm sorry? I don't have any information regarding those those allegations. What can you tell us about the phone calls that he uh, is reported to have made while he was inside, while the shooting was in progress? There, unfortunately, because they are subject to the investigation and they are a matter of federal evidence, I can confirm there were phone calls made. We have them. 
we continue to review them and analyze them, not just in content, but where they came from, where they originated from, or where the calls there uh, terminated. And so other than that, there's nothing further I can comment. Are there any phone calls that occurred before? I'm sure there are, but I'm not aware of any. I'm not aware of any at this time. Are the reports credible that he had patronized some gay clubs in Orlando? Are those credible? Like some witnesses have said that. I don't have any knowledge of him patronizing any other clubs uh, Sir, than this one at this time. Man, that's an open-ended question. When we are giving guard, are we, when we are giving leads for potential terrorist information, they have to meet a certain set of criteria before we can initiate an investigation, and that will be based on the totality of the circumstances at that time. It's kind of a nebulous question at this point. Are you denying that the FBI knew? I will tell you that we're looking at everything, and I can't say that whether it's specifically looked at as a casing. We are looking at everything he did leading up to this attack, and as the director pointed out, we are going backwards as well to look at all of the things we knew about before and things that we've investigated in the past. This is an investigation that has an infant, a, a, no finite end at this particular time, and that goes for the beginning. We're going to go back even further than we did if that's possible. I'm sorry? Are you still ruling out the possibility of the second shooter? The investigation is ongoing at this time, but I will tell you that the, the deceased subject right now is the main subject in this investigation. And so if you, if we are continuing to do interviews to see if there's anybody that's associated, whether that means they were involved in the planning or the execution of this act, they will be brought to justice if and when we identify someone. Was there ever any explosives found in the club or was that all the club participants? Uh, that's not, it's not something I can uh, confirm for you at this time, but I will. I can confirm that at a later time. Can you say definitively whether there were or were not explosives found inside the club? I think she just asked that. Yes. The, the, evident, the, the crime scene, as I mentioned earlier, is still being processed, and it would be premature for me to, to, to comment on that at this time. I can't. I don't have any information on that. I'm sorry. Uh, that, that was done down in, in the Miami division, and, and I don't have that information handy. You know handy. in the timeline between the first round of shots, the wall, and the second round of shots, what took place? Uh, that would be something for Chief John Mean. I can't comment on that. How many hours? Any other questions? How did he get a long gun into the club? Was it visible where he was carrying it when he walked into the club? I can't comment on that at this time. Excuse me? That's something we're attempting to determine during the course of the investigation. And again, because the crime scene has not been released and all of our interviews have not been uh, completed, I can't comment on that at this time. Sir, is this going to be characterized officially as a hate crime? Here's what I would say about that. This was an act of violence born out of hate that inflicted terror on in an entire community. So I would call it a hate crime. I would call it terrorism. It's both. Would Next question. Would you have any problems the same I'm not going to comment on our investigative techniques at this time. I don't have the, re the results of those, and so I can't comment on them. Excuse me? Is the shooter's car still here? Uh, that is still a matter of federal evidence. It's still in our custody. It's a, it's a good question. I can tell you that we are combing not just the street, but everywhere we believe the shooter to have been, as I mentioned, in, in the coming days before this event. And so we are collecting all digital, video, electronic evidence that we can. And again, I would ask anyone out there that they think that thinks they may have something of FBI concern, bring it to us, no matter how small. We do want to see anything you have that you may have concern with. Do you I don't have the answer to that. I'm not going to comment on it anymore. I've given you my answer regarding Disney. Here's Next question. Last question. Does he have any other address or anything else that people should be concerned about? As I mentioned before, there are no current, credible, singular threats facing 
Florida or the nation to my knowledge. You can be assured that if and when something that, that rises to our attention, we will make sure the public is acutely aware. What do you expect to get all charged? I'm sorry? What do you expect to finalize your charge? I'm going to refer to AUSA Bentley for that. As I said before and as I said today, we do not know when charges will be finalized to answer your question. Indeed, we're not sure what charges will be brought or if charges will be brought. I can assure you that we're working with our law enforcement partners to find out everything we can about what happened at the Pulse nightclub. We're using all law enforcement and legal tools to reconstruct not only the events of that night, but the events over the past several months, not only with respect to what the shooter did in Orlando, but what he did in Fort Pierce. This is as exhaustive a review of evidence as you will find in the United States. We're leaving no stone unturned, but we simply cannot speculate on the timing of charges or whether there will be charges. It would really be unfair to not only any named person with respect to charges, but also to the public. We want to keep the public well informed, and we do not want to invite idle speculation that will only hamper our efforts. How far are you from wrapping up the entire investigation? If you could, so if you could, I'd like that. We cannot put a time limit on that. The only limit we have is we're going to go until we we're absolutely satisfied that we've uncovered every bit of evidence that's out there, and we've reviewed every possible charge. That's when this investigation will end. It might be a matter of days, it could be weeks, it could be years. There's simply no way to determine at this time how long the investigation will last. Is this white charge Are you able to say whether you have any other suspects or persons The question was whether we have any other suspects or persons of interest. I cannot answer that question directly, but I will tell you that we are investigating not only this crime, but law enforcement is talking to everyone associated with the shooter. And that includes his family, his friends, people in businesses. It includes anyone who fell within the ambit of what the shooter was doing in the months leading up to the crime. We're, I'm sorry? Did you drive him to the club? Is who cooperating? I cannot comment on the cooperation of any individual at this time. As Assistant Special Agent Hopper um, said, we are talking to literally hundreds of people and any cooperation that we receive will be kept in confidence. See, see me, me core zone, uh, zone, um, um, going, uh, the Ciudad de Orlando, uh, la, el estado, uh, el estado Florida y la nación is, uh, es un, uh, action terrible. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Thomas Roberts at MSNBC World Headquarters in New York, and we've been watching the latest update. Now, 60 hours after the fact of the massacre at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando and getting the latest briefing there, Governor Rick Scott talking right now, also hearing from the FBI and the U.S. Attorney Lee Bentley, who is joining forces here. And as Lee Bentley said, they are leaving no stone unturned as they try to figure out the motive behind Omar Mateen and whether or not he had any help in what took place there in taking 49 lives and injuring 53 other people. Uh, we have a lot to cover right now, and I want to go to our Pete Williams, NBC's justice correspondent. NBC's Eamon Muldeen is also going to be joining us. He is outside the Mateen family home in Port St. Lucie, Florida, and Sean Henry's joining the conversation. He's president and chief security officer for CrowdStrike Services and an MSNBC contributor. Pete, let me begin with you, because I know you've been turning up lots of new details to move this story forward. Uh, the one thing from the FBI, Ron Hopper, uh, talking about the fact that they don't have credible or specific threats for Orlando or the nation at large right now in terms of whether or not there could be any type of copycat 
or any other fears that they're investigating. They're strictly focused right now on what happened at Pulse and Omar Mateen. Yes, and I thought the two uh, sort of newsworthy events out of this news conference were, first of all, nothing to suggest that Mateen was contemplating another target. There's been lots of discussion of whether he was casing other places. Um, but I've been told by folks here that they didn't think visits to other places were, in fact, casing visits. Uh, he was specifically asked about Disney World, and he said he didn't know anything about that, which I think is very telling. So nothing to suggest, he said, as they pour through his electronic media, the phones, the computers, the material they found there, which are now being analyzed at Quantico, Virginia, nothing to suggest he was contemplating another target. Secondly, that he didn't know of Omar Mateen patronizing any other gay clubs in the area. Uh, you may recall from your time down there that folks in the Orlando community have said they thought they saw him in the Pulse Club before, uh, and many officials have said they take those reports very seriously. Others have said they thought they saw him in other gay clubs, and today uh, the special agent down there says he doesn't know of him patronizing any other clubs. And another important thing, some of the witnesses uh, to this event have said and said at the news conference yesterday that they thought he was talking to someone else in the nightclub, that someone else was helping him, that someone else may in fact have even been firing shots and the FBI and the police chief said they know of no one else who was doing that. But in terms of what's new about the investigation, uh, beyond of course what they're going to talk about publicly is the main focus right now of investigators is on Omar Mateen's wife and what she knew and what we were told today is that on the night of the shooting, this is Saturday night leading into early Sunday morning, as he was leaving the apartment, he said he was going to visit friends. But she thought and feared that he was going to go attack the Pulse nightclub, and she urged him not to. He left. She was afraid that's where she was going, or where he was going, rather, but she didn't warn anyone and didn't call the police, Thomas. And Pete, that is specifically tied to Pulse, not that she was Correct. in fear that he was going to go and try to assault another establishment, but that it was specifically this nightclub. And if she's revealed that to investigators, is that why we're hearing from Lee Bentley saying that they're trying to figure out if and when charges would be finalized, if she is complicit because of silence in relation to this massacre? Precisely, yes. And, and uh, all, it's understandable that they can't say this in a public news conference, but what I'm told is that they are, in fact, looking at potential charges. Uh, it's not quite clear what they would be, but Thomas, I would be very surprised if she is not charged with something. Mm -hmm. And if she isn't for some reason charged by the federal government, remember the state of Florida can also file charges. So it is an ongoing crime scene. We know that the uh, FBI uh, assistant special investigator there, Ron Hopper, saying that it's uh, being processed, also not talking more specifically about weapons. Two, we know that were purchased legally and traced back to Mateen Pete. They, when I was there, they also talked about another weapon being found in the car. But that's right. all I knew of. Uh, they had not. Yes. They had not revealed whether that was legally traced back to his purchase. Well, if, in any event, it wasn't used in the shooting. It was only the two that he bought just in the come in the days before the shooting, the um, the uh, six-hour semi-automatic assault-style rifle and the nine-millimeter handgun. Pete Williams in Washington for us. Pete, thank you, sir. I want to go to our colleague, Eamon Mohadeen.